Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a stenciled background which is a little bit different as we will be using the reverse of the stencil. So to start with I'm going to be using the leaf bed stencil. This is so very pretty and it is really really intricate as well. I'm then going to be taking a piece of watercolour cardstock. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half and because I am going to be using embossing powder on this and embossing it I am adding a piece um, some anti-static powder down before I do adhere the um, piece of cardstock to the stencil from behind. So once I've done that, I can then take my embossing ink. Now this is the clear embossing ink from Altenew. It's a really great embossing ink, very, very sticky. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna add all of this embossing powder over the top of the stencil. This is gonna go through to the um, watercolor cardstock. To make sure that I have all of the little intricate pieces, I'm then taking a foam blending tool and then adding some more of that embossing ink and just squeezing it in in between those really delicate pieces that we have there. So this stencil is great for this because we're kind of pressing rather than rubbing the embossing ink around. So this is a great way to use the stencil. So once I have finished adding all of this embossing ink, I can then gently remove the stencil. You do need to be quite delicate with this because you don't want to kind of scratch or move that embossing ink that we do have down on the cardstock. Once that's done, I'm going to add some pure white embossing powder over. You could use crystal clear if you wanted to, but I do find that white always works best for this technique. Once that's done, I'm going to remove all of the excess by tapping the back and then I can heat set it. It will take a little while to heat set this because you have near enough the whole of this background covered with embossing powder. And then once you have it done, you can see just how pretty this is, although it's very hard to see. I'm then going to take my 24 pan watercolours from Altenew, and I'm going to take three of these colours. So I'm taking the cherry blossom, I'm also going to take the warm and cosy, and I'm then going to take the pocket full of sunshine. So these pinks and oranges and yellows work really well to e with each other. You do need to pick colours that are close together on the colour wheel, otherwise you're going to get like muddy brownie colours, unless that's what you want. So once I have my colours, I can then use some clean clear water on the front and back of my um, embossed panel. So this is watercolour cardstock and this is going to take the water really well. Now I add the water to the back for two reasons. It helps the piece stay in um, the right place that I want it to be in and also stops warping as well, well helps to stop it. I'm then going to add the watercolours in onto my panel and then you can see this whole piece come to life which is really really cool. So I am adding my lightest colour down first which was the yellow. I'm then going to add the orange and then I'm going to add the touches of pink. I'm just adding this randomly. I want these colours to mend and bleed and blend and be nice and lovely together. So as you can see I'm just adding them here and there to create my pattern. It's at this point I decided it was a bit bright so I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen roll and take some of that colour away and then leave my panel to dry. I'm then going to take the two largest dies from the Apothecary Labels die set and I'm going to cut these using my mini blossom. So I'm cutting the largest one out of some jet black cardstock and then the smaller one from some Nina Solar White. So this is some stamping smooth white card. I'm just going to run that through my die cutting machine and then I have my little mat and layers for my sentiment. For the sentiment I'm using a cross the pond stamp set and I always kind of keep the sentiments on the sheet before I decide which one that's going to work best. Once I've done that I'm going to ink that up using my favourite obsidian ink and then stamp that into place onto the white label that we have there. I can then adhere these together, I'm just using my Altenew tape glue but you can add whatever glue you want but this one does work really really well. Once I had that, I then decided I wanted to add a little bit more behind it. I went through my um, little craft stash box and I found this die cut using the Spring Roses die set just from some white cardstock and I'm just going to pop that into place again using some glue tape. I then have my panel which is nicely dried and I did cut this down to three and three quarters by five. And you can see that I'm just going to add some foam tape behind here to add a little bit of height to my card before I add that onto the card base. 
Again, I'm adding some more foam tape behind this piece. I'm just going to add it behind the black cardstock so it doesn't show through anywhere. Once I have that in place, I then decided I wanted a little bit more black on here to kind of draw your eye in away from that sentiment a little bit. So I'm just going to be using some of the jet black enamel dots from the Green Hills enamel dots collection. And here is the card complete. So I really do hope that you like the card and that you've enjoyed the video. I also hope that you like the technique too and that you do give it a go. If you do, please let us know because we would love to see it. Again, everyone, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really, really soon. Hello there, crafty friend, Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques, and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.